that was a team still looking for a sense of chemistry. I am a different player. This is a different team. So Cameron Swartz is definitely dialed in tonight. Love that little extra spice in the matchup to keep an eye on. Swartz actually did lead Georgia Tech in a losing effort up in Chestnut Hill back in December. D. Kittner helps the two teams tip it off. Georgia Tech in Navy. And Boston College as the 11 seed in white in this matchup this evening. Boston Bianca. College starting out in man to man, and BC lets them get to the front of the rim in the first possession. Bianca Jackson, first points of the game as you take a look at the starting five for Boston College. JoJo Lacey, Maria Gatang, big force on the inside. Ali Van Timmeren's been in the starting lineup here as of late. You mentioned Taina Mayer, the point guard. And Andrea Daly, that's the same starting five that got Boston College a much needed win in the regular season finale at Wake Forest. Starting five for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. You see there, Angel just told you about Swartz, Tony Morgan, the point guard, Jackson at the first point, and then Blackshear and Juan Arenas. Neither one of these coaches have had the year that they anticipated, yet this is new life. This is a chance here to play well and to play tomorrow. Jackson lining up the three. She has the first five points of the game. Well, there's a graduate student in her fifth year, locked in, understands how to play in tournament time. Jackson spending the last two seasons with the Florida State Seminoles. She went 0 for 9 in the regular season meeting against Boston College. Clearly, she's looking for a different outcome now here at the ACC tournament. Pull-up shot short off the front of the win from Blackshear. Daly will try the three. Van Timmeren hangs on to the ball. This PC team has had to adjust. One of their top players, Fantavia Wagner, has been out, but do expect to see her back. What a play! Can't get the finish, though, from Mayer. Morgan being given plenty of space, and she gets the finish. I mean, one of the best shot blockers, not just in the ACC, but in the country, and Tony Morgan goes right into her chest. That's a big-time confidence booster. Georgia Tech, three for three to start the game. Slow start for Boston College, try to change that here, this offensive possession. They got to get Gok Dang, number five, inside involved. And Timurin makes a three. See how quickly you can get right back in it with a three ball. Get some momentum going your way. Neither one of these teams make a lot of threes. Both about four a game. Swartz. Top threat in that department for Georgia Tech has made 53s on the season. Nell Fortner in her fourth year with the Yellow Jackets and admitted it's been a, a roller coaster, an up and down season, more downs than ups as she's been accustomed to a lot more success. Back to back 10 win ACC seasons, the previous two for Joanna Burnaby McNamee. Her fifth season at Boston College. Remember the run her BC team had here in Greensboro back in 2020, making it to the semifinals. There is Gokdang. Tie ball. And it'll stay here. I mean, Gokdang has got the right idea. What a beautiful reverse pivot. You love a post that can reverse pivot to create space. This is where both teams have to be excellent, and that is in their situational offense. When the game slows down, you got to execute your out-of-bounds plays after free throws, after timeouts, all those opportunities when there's a dead ball. I think that one had all the makings to work, just the travel creating the turnover. Gokdan coming off a career-high 22 in the last game. See if she can carry some of that over here to Greensboro as Van Timmeren picks up the foul. Now Van Timmeren trying to hedge that ball screen and they'd like to bring two to the ball when Cameron Schwartz gets a screen. 
Try to make it difficult for the only player for Nell Fortner that averages double figures. Tiana Todd checking into the game, missed the last game and missed some time with injury. Was out 10 games in December and January, but averages about 28 minutes per game, just about 10 points per game for the Eagles. Block on the inside. He talked about the shot blocking ability of Gokdang. There you see it. When Dontavia Wagner is in the game, Jen, and she's missed the last eight with a lower leg injury. But she didn't even get a sweat going, and she's already firing. <laughs> missed that time being out on the floor. Her last appearance, January 22nd against Clemson. So we'll see if she can help this BC team out, give them a little more spark as they trail. That'll help do it, too. A defensive play, offensive foul of the call on Blackshear. I mean, you lower the shoulder, and that is an easy one for this veteran crew. Dee Kantner on the call. Dee Kantner, Eric Bruton, Talisa Green, our officiating crew for this one tonight. Eagles just one for six from the floor to start this game. Six to shoot. Wagner driving. Gokdang got the rebound and had to bat it away. Jackson tries another three. Why not? She's got eight. When you push all the way to the baseline, you flatten out the D. The D has to seek the level of the ball. The top of the floor is open. That creates an opportunity for Jackson. Georgia Tech shooting 57% in the regular season, meaning they were under 30% for the game. Of course, it's early, but the Jackets coming out of the gate strong. Morgan will try the three. Yeah, that's the part of Morgan's game that has to improve in the offseason, and it will with time in the gym. Morgan and Mayer, the two all ACC freshman point guards leading their respective teams in this matchup. I mean, they're really good point guards, too. They, they can, they have a whole other level that they're not even aware of yet as Andrea, Andrea Daly goes back door. Beautiful execution on that play. 10-5, Georgia Tech lead. The one thing for these two freshman point guards is there are so many good point guards in the ACC that you have film against some of the best players in the country at your position. Well, Bianca Jackson helping Georgia Tech get off to a hot start here in Greensboro. Watch this. When you watch me play, you support all of us. Do you show your daughter? Her future matters. You invest in the next generation of leaders. When you watch me play, you fight for our dreams. Are you watching this? Harris with a fantastic save. When you watch me play, take the shot. Make the move. Team up. Drive. Win. You prove we deserve more media coverage. When you watch the game, you change the game. Gatorade Fit. Fitness starts from the inside out. Get healthy, real hydration. And no added sugar, artificial sweeteners, or added colors. Gatorade Fit. Healthy, real hydration today helps you feel tomorrow. I'm your glitchy Wi-Fi, and I've decided, well, if you're on vacation, I am too. <laughs> Which means your smart home isn't so smart. Sprinkler on. And now I'm sending mixed signals to your garage. But if you haven't bundled your home in auto coverage, trying to unpack this isn't going to be too much fun. Hey, check the router. So get Allstate. You better protect it from mayhem while saving up to 25% when you bundle home in auto. Do you have an invention idea but don't know what to do next? Go to inventhelp.com. 
We have representatives nationwide and services to showcase your invention. Get started today. Go to inventhelp.com for free information. is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. Wonderful ACC tournament memories, men's and women's men's, coming back here to Greensboro next week. Debbie, any particularly favorite memories for you in your time you've been coming here to Greensboro? Well, ACC tournament memories is winning one. That's the best. <laughs> That's a good uh, one. But NC State, well, with the recent three-peat, I remember the dynasty of Duke and their four in a row. How about Ivory Latta's four in a row? Uh, Muffet McGraw's four in a row. But uh, probably in 2007, when <laughs> NC State upset Duke in the semifinals, NC State wasn't on paper supposed to win that. Duke was undefeated and the number one team in the country and Kay Yao's team beat them. And Kay had a wig on, gloves, battling cancer, could barely stand up with horrible neuropathy in her feet. And uh, that team found a way to win that game. That was uh, probably number one on my list. I can understand why. Incredible performances over the years, inspired performances. Here uh, in Greensboro. There should be a Disney movie about that season yeah. and or a 30 for 30 or something special about the 2007 season for NC State because it was unique. Boston College shooting just 22% in the game. Ben Timmeron has it blocked out of bounds as we welcome in Nerea Hermosa to the game. Angel, what you got? Debbie was talking about that NC State team, that 2007. Well, I was a part of that as well because I remember going into NC, NC State and we were K. Yao's 700th win. And I remember talking about that amongst ourselves, amongst our team. And I said, it felt like we were playing against 15 people on the floor because that's how inspired they were. It was almost like there was nothing that we could do. And that team was indeed very special. Uh, I called that game that Angel played in in 07 at NC State in early February of 07. Then two weeks later, or less than two weeks, the court was named uh, KL Court in Reynolds Coliseum. That was a unique, special year. I'm telling you, if anybody from Disney or Allies paying attention, it's a good, inspiring story. Angel, of course, spent her playing days with Florida State, Debbie, NC State. So I'm glad you guys let me hang out. Call some basketball with you as well. Tell you what, my Emory Eagles are going to the postseason, though. It's got their bid, Division Three. There you go. We know you're a soccer player, Jen. I do pretend have a... to be a basketball oh, player. We come know. on, I have love for both in my heart, Debbie. <laughs> Love the postseason. There is nothing like it. And these teams certainly understand that as well. They may be young. They may have inexperienced players leading the way, but wanted to try to win and move on, get a date with the Miami Hurricanes tomorrow. See, that's a mistake that you can't make if you're Georgia Tech. You can't dribble across midcourt and pick it up against the team pressing. And that's the high-low game that Nell Fortner was concerned about when I spoke with her this morning. Gak Dang is so big and long, but Hermosa on the floor at 6'5 should be able to neutralize some of that. There's Here. Hermosa right there. Yeah, that's the second miss she's had from right about that same area. Hermosa, the 6'5 senior out of Vitoria, Spain for the Jackets. Todd. Offensive rebound, though, there's JoJo Lacey. She had 21 points, one off her career high in the regular season meeting against the Jackets. 
her first points of this game, and it's a one-point game. The other thing, too, is both these teams turn the ball over a lot, so early on they're doing a better job of taking care of it, at least getting a shot up and getting an offensive rebound. Hermosa and Gakdang, and Hermosa wins this battle, her first points. Well, if Georgia Tech is going to win, she has to nullify what Gakdang does inside. The two of them at 6'5 are a lot of size. That's going to be a foul on Hermosa, her second. Watch Gok Dang's going to get to the middle of the floor. The pass is going to come from the top. This is just a pretty simple little screen and roll. Shooters in the corners, floor spaced out. The help is late. Trying to draw a charge. Good body control inside. And now Debbie, let's see if Gok Dang and maybe even be a little more effective. Hermosa having to go to the bench with those two personal fouls. Won Adana is in to try to defend. Lacey again tracks down the offensive rebound, but then loses it. Swartz came away with it. Remember, Cam Swartz facing her former team. Had a pretty impressive career all ACC first team selection, ACC most improved player last year. Remember, she led the conference in ACC games last year, Cam Sports, for, with 19 points per game for Boston College. I mean, she also had a huge game here for BC oh, yeah. in a BC uniform. You never know who's going to come alive on the ACC tournament stage. Well, look at the quickness of Wagner, and then she gets up the floor. It's a travel on Daly, fifth turnover by the Eagles. I mean, Dontavia Wagner does a nice job, having not played in over a month, of getting that deflection. What does she add back in for this Boston College team? Speed, length, quickness, helps them on the glass, defends at a high level. She's got elite level athleticism. Swartz looking inside, Juan Adana is immediately double teamed. Here comes some help, it's Jackson. Block inside. And then a foul. Jackson really got caught up with Daly, but is gonna be whistled for the foul, her first. I think Joanna Burdaby McNamee is using Wagner in, in different spurts, like a couple of trips up and down the floor because, you know, it takes some time to get your win back at game speed. Plus, this is an offensive possession. Final seconds of the quarter ticking down. Georgia Tech up three. Mayer wants to go inside. Van Timmeren. No foul called. And that's not going to be in time. So a low scoring first quarter in this final game of day one. The Yellow Jackets up three over Boston College. You've dreamed about the perfect house, a place to call your own, and a place to not only stretch out. And both of these teams well aware that their season continuing certainly is dependent upon winning this game. Moving on to face Miami in the next round. Hurricanes a six seed in this ACC tournament. Mayer making her way to the basket, it's good. The turnover should have allowed Georgia Tech to match up. They had time to get back. If you're gonna turn it over in the live situation, usually you can't get back. That shot was flat. It's going to be a foul between the two players going for the rebound. And there's Miami head coach Katie Meyer taking in, doing a little scouting in this matchup. She's saying, hmm, I get the winner. Which one is it going to be? They're prepared for both, her and her staff. Her team watching this one as well. Cavender twins, saw them in the front row. Kaylee Cavender. And a pretty impressive debut season they both have, but Haley carrying a lot of the scoring load for the Hurricanes this season. I mean, when Gok Dang is open, you got to throw it in there. 
You know, because neither one of these teams shoots the three very much, the defense is all inside the paint. Everyone's got a foot in the paint. Clogs it up a little bit. Well, the 70th annual New York Live ACC Men's Tournament begins next Tuesday afternoon here at the Greensboro Coliseum. We'll have three first-round games for you at 2, 4.30, and 7 Eastern right here on ACC Network and also on the ESPN app. Boston College has never led in this game. Have an opportunity to do so here. There's going to be a foul before the ball can even be inbounded. Well, and when you get two whistles on a play like that, you did it. Remember, Angel told you about a little extra motivation for Boston College going against their former teammate, Cam Swartz, who picked up the foul on that play. Eight to shoot, Mayer. Oh, look at that rebound, wow. Wow. Wins entangled as <laughs> all players, and JoJo Lacey, the one for Boston College, trying to pull it down. In a crowd, that was a heck of a rebound on a 50-50 ball. And that was just a jump ball, no foul called on the play, so possession arrow favoring Georgia Tech. Usually when Carter comes in the game, she can get Georgia Tech a bucket. She's right around that ACC logo area. Doc Dang grabs the rebound for Boston College. Doc Dang brought it down. Now the open look, Lacey cutting the lane. Good play off the entry to the post. Perfect timing on that cut. First lead of the game for Boston College. Now a turnover. Six of the game by the Jackets. Will it result in points? You betcha. And Nell Fortner wants a timeout. Boston College using their defense to get a little offense and take a three-point lead here in the second quarter over Georgia Tech. There are all kinds of products in this world, things that make life easier, more and more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there, to guide you through the happiest and most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. This is our product. This is what we do. Next on Behind the Series. Let me tell you about the greatest roster ever assembled. The monster, the outlaw, and you can't forget about the boss. Sometimes you just want to eat your heroes. The Subway Series, the greatest menu of all time. Running a food pantry can be a lot of work, but thankfully, I've got a lot of help. Good morning. Good morning. We brought backup. We're always grateful to have the Food Line Associates pitch in because the more help we get, the more we can give. Here you go. Thanks. Oh, you're so and welcome. our local community needs it now more than ever. Are we too late? No, we got you. Here to fill tables and hearts with hope, Food Lion feeds. Thank you. Here for every moment. There are all kinds of products in this world, things that make life easier or more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there to guide you through the happiest and most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. This is our product. This is what we do. It's bow time. <laughs> our real deal Southern flavors bring you back to basics, just like grandma's home cooking. If your grandma was a Bojangles. Get a four piece Supreme's combo with biscuit, fries, and tea only at Bojangles. It's bow time. <laughs> with Butcher Box, you get 100% grass fed beef, organic free range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild caught seafood, and so much more. Sign up today at ButcherBox.com for a special offer. Hey fans, 
a reminder to download the ACC Three Point Challenge app presented by New York Life to help benefit the local boys and girls clubs. You can score points for your school, and after the tournament, the local boys and girls club will receive a donation from New York Life based on their affiliated ACC team's final ranking. Well, Boston College got on a little bit of a run here in the second quarter. In fact, Georgia Tech hasn't scored in the quarter. It's a 10-2 run going back to the first quarter for the Eagles. Well, their defense cranked it up a little bit, and they did a great job of protecting inside out. They got some live ball turnovers, and then they got some easy transition buckets. I like BC changing up their looks defensively, bringing more pressure, using their athleticism and length on this end of the floor. No seniors on this Boston College team. Five freshmen, no transfers coming in this year for the Eagles. Seven to shoot for Georgia Tech. Morgan. Another big stop by BC's defense. See, the three-quarter court pressure takes Georgia Tech deeper into the shot clock, and then they have less options offensively. Foul off the ball against Georgia Tech. That's on Morgan, her first. I asked Maria Gokdang while she was warming up what her wingspan was. She's like, oh, maybe 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever so you it need is, to know, good. you need to know that. <laughs> I mean, one of the best shot blockers in Boston College program history, and she's just a sophomore. Yeah. Came into this game third all time, and she only needs two more blocks. I know she already has at least one to reach second. Well, her footwork and her hands are getting better, right? She's getting better at catching passes in the paint, in traffic. That's one of the areas that she's improved upon. Angel, you were listening in that last time out to Boston College. Yes, absolutely. And for Boston College, the ladies just seem very settled in, and that's exactly what they said. Way to get to this point because we're settled. And at this point, Joanna also told her team, we're getting it done first on the defensive end. She said, but we have to turn up the heat. They came out with the pressure. She said, we have to continue to build on it, saying they're getting it done on the glass first. Got Dang spinning against Rowan Adonaz, who commits the foul. I mean, there's that reverse pivot. All you young bigs out there, you got to develop this part of your game because it automatically creates some separation. She's always looking to step through and counter, but you can you can reverse pivot and shoot that jumper. I tell you, who's really good at that is Maddie Westbelt at Notre Dame. She's got a really good footwork in the post. Notre Dame, regular season champions, all eyes on that game, wondering if we get to see Olivia Miles in this tournament. She left that last game with injury of the regular season. Top four seeds with a double bye in this ACC tournament will start play on Friday. Congratulations to Notre Dame and Neil Ivey being the, named the ACC Coach of the Year. And uh, we'll, we have not received any update or any news on Olivia Miles, but we wish her well. Well, coming up here on ACC Network after the game, the Nothing But Net crew, they've got you covered. Complete post-game coverage with highlights, analysis, and insight. If any news does squeak out, you can be sure that crew's going to have you covered. They've got it. Great to see them all here on site. Kelsey and Kelly and Muffet. You're always talking to Muffet anyway. Ivory Latta. Yeah, but Muffet doesn't like me talking to her, so I'm not talking to her anymore. <laughs> I'll let you guys work that out. <laughs> well, you talked about Boston College's defense being so key. That's exactly what Angel was just reporting that Joanna Burnaby McNamee was talking about. Let's help the Eagles here to the lead. Van Timmeren diving right there at you could throw, court. Throw a yellow flag on that one. The second personal on Van Timmeren. I mean, this is possession for possession basketball in the postseason. Right here, behind the back, Morgan, and then Van Timmeren with the takedown. Good hustle play, both players. Good sportsmanship. Tony Morgan, though, having to come off. The All-ACC freshman point guard for the Jackets after that play. Jackets 0 for 6 this quarter. Outscored seven to nothing 
here in quarter two. Jackson trying to change the fortunes of the Jackets. And it'll stay on this end. And some concern perhaps over on that Georgia Tech bench is Morgan holding her right wrist. Situational offense right here. Georgia Tech needs a bucket. Swartz driving to the basket with her left is good. Really good take. Two hard dribbles from the top of the floor all the way to the rim with her left. First points of the game for the first for the former Boston College Eagle. Doc Dane going to work again in the paint. An opportunity for one more coming. There's where 6-6 six, six <laughs> wingspan comes into play. I mean, literally, it should be a drop in the bucket for her. Well, and, and Georgia Tech, Debbie, right now is trying to figure out what do we do to defend her? Because now, Won Ananas has two fouls. Formosa was in the game. She's got two fouls trying to defend Gokdang in the paint. Well, I think you have to have better ball pressure on the passer. And you got to mix up your coverages. You might have to front her a little bit and rely on some backside help. Or Hermosa's got to play bigger, you know, at 6'5 and be able to help. Six points in the game for Gokdang. Five point lead for Boston College. Turnover. There. Stopped in her tracks, and then it's going the other way. Well, neither team can really separate from the other right now, so that keeps it competitive. Jackson having to handle the basketball with Morgan on the bench at the moment for Georgia Tech. Swartz, under 10 to shoot. Bone on and on, shot fake. Will it help her out? Yes, it will. Really nice. Good poise, very good patience. Of course, Boston College knows where their bread is buttered. It's with Gokdang, who's not afraid to pass. Had Tiana Todd cut into the basket. Jojo Lacey back into the game. Junior has four points for the Eagles. It's a foul as Lacey got it, was going to the basket. Second on Jackson. Every catch is contested, every cut has a bump. Neither team in very good offensive rhythm, both doing a good job on the defensive end. So Morgan back out there now for Georgia Tech. We saw her holding her wrist after she went off and was fouled a few minutes ago. We'll see how that holds up. You can see the numbers for Lacey in the regular season meeting. 21 points led all scorers. One away from her career high in BC's win against Georgia Tech. That was back in December, though. It was a while ago up in Chestnut Hill. with all the youth and inexperience for both of these teams. Both feel they've grown to get to this point in the season. Georgia Tech, though, coming in as a 14 seed, their lowest ever in program history here in Greensboro, the ACC tournament. Consistent theme you heard from all the coaches getting ready for this tournament this week was that extra emphasis that every possession can make a difference. Look how tight this one remains. As you said, Debbie, neither team really able to pull away. And then just not giving up on the play there. Carmen Harrison, the 6'2 sophomore for the Jackets, but couldn't finish it off. 
See, there's better ball pressure, and they it gets a turnover trying to pass it inside. Haven't seen uh, BC attempt to bounce pass yet into the post. And yeah, Won Adonaz able to get Gakdang out of position on that play, around and out for Swartz. Mayor looking in the corner for Wagner. Yes! Wagner's good about a step inside that three-point line. Well, she's the leading scorer for the Eagles, averaging 13 points, seven and a half rebounds. That's also the top number for any of the Boston College players. So you know they've missed her. And I think, Debbie, she probably would have been even more in the conversation for most improved player if she had not been out such a long time. Nine games she was out, and a good take to the basket there. Mayer with four points, and Boston College continuing to extend their lead here in the second. Swartz pulls up and gets it to rattle home. She has four points. One of the things Joanna Burnaby McNamee told me she was telling her team in defending Cam Swartz was you have to do it cleanly. She's going to try to draw the foul. She was nine for nine from the free throw line back in December when these two teams met. There's a bounce pass, and there's a great move. There you go. Really good. You got to bring some help to that because I would pinch in and not and turn her into a passer. I would not let her just make a move inside, but that was a beautiful move. Eight points in the game for Gok Dang. Sophomore out of Maryland. Gok Dang averages about one assist a game. That's it. Watch the bounce pass inside. There's that reverse pivot. She gets two dribbles to the midline. The help from the weak side wasn't ready or revved up to help. Got to be active on that weak side and be ready to give some help. Well, Georgia Tech had the better of the first 10 minutes. Boston College has had the better of the second. How are they going to finish off our first half? We'll see. Mayer still has it in her hands, wants to go inside. Got dang off the fingertips, still a shot. Won't go. And Boston College will take a lead into the break. 27-18, they hold Georgia Tech to just six points in the second quarter. Try to run a timing play there at the end. Come on now, we know Nell Fortner knows how to coach some defense, so I'm sure she's got a good plan in place. We'll see if her players can try to execute it. But I do want to ask you, Debbie, so the court is shrinking. What, what does that mean exactly for Georgia Tech? The space is shrinking. The court is getting smaller. It's not wide and high, and there's space. There's not much space, and they're in the gaps, and they're making it difficult to get anything going offensively. Good start to the third quarter for Boston College as Van Timmeren goes right in the paint and scores. Remember, Georgia Tech started this game on a 7-0 run. They were four for seven to start, but then finished the half four for 22. See if the break at halftime did them some good. Seven to shoot and double dribble. So it's a turnover to start quarter three. You got to go inside out. You got to go side to side. If you can't generate anything with your defense, you got to find ways to move the ball and move people through that zone. Same starting five back on the floor for both teams that started the game. Van Timmeren looking for Gokdang. Jackson went for the steal, and that left Gokdang wide open. They just throw right over the top, and with that 6'6 six, six wingspan, she can catch it at the corner of the rim, or corner of the backboard. Still perfect, as Angel referenced a few moments ago. Four for four in the game is Gokdang. Blackshear shot off the front of the rim for Georgia Tech. 
Here comes Boston College daily. All five starters have scored for BC in this game. And a foul whistled on the floor. This is what Angel was referencing. Watch Gok Dang, she's gonna dribble here into a handoff. And then you're gonna see Timurin come up to the top and watch the spacing. She screens, she rolls, the ball goes to the high post, right over the top. Very well executed by BC. Georgia Tech needing a little execution on the offensive end. Bianca Jackson, their leading scorer, she had eight points in the first half. All of those in the first quarter, actually. Morgan gets one to fall. She's got four. All ACC freshman point guards leading their respective teams on the floor tonight. Morgan for Georgia Tech, Tyena Mayer for Boston College. Turnovers could come back to haunt BC in this game. That's number 11. Can the Jackets make them pay? Blackshear yeah. has her first point. So what Morgan does is she slices the court and gets a piece of the paint and allows a 15-footer wide open jump shot. That's very good execution by Georgia Tech. Lacey, it's gonna be an offensive foul called against the Eagles, and that is JoJo Lacey's third. Slicing the court, Jen, is switching sides of the floor. You know, Tony Morgan comes up the right side and then crosses the midline to the left side. Dontavia Wagner and Tiana Todd coming onto the floor for Boston College and Angel. Tiana Todd playing with a little extra motivation tonight. We'll get you that story in just a second. The freshman missed the last game for the Eagles. The playing significant minutes averages 27 and a half. And Timmerin, that's going to be a travel call, so it'll go to Georgia Tech. So, Angel, you can tell us a little bit more about who and what Tiana is playing for tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Tiana missed their last game versus Wake Forest because she went to visit her mother, Amanda, who is sick with stage four cancer. We wanted to be extremely sensitive when it comes to their privacy in this matter, but Tiana told me, she said, I think she would be thrilled. It would give her a boost if we sent her well wishes, and we want to make sure we do just that. We know that her daughter's playing for her tonight, and we certainly are sending all of our best. If mom is watching back home, Amanda, giving you strength from all of us here in Greensboro. Yes, Amanda, we are sending our very best energy and prayers and strength to you. Keep fighting. Boston College is led by as many as 13 in this game, up nine now. There's a pass out from Gokdang. You said she had to become a better passer. Well, I want Georgia Tech to make her a passer. <laughs> That's what they want, right? They don't want her to keep scoring. Morgan dishes off. Short corner shot is missed. The other thing, too, is Georgia Tech's just got to make some shots. Mayor, the dish. Todd will get another look at it. Two freshmen can't connect this time around. Todd, by the way, from Ontario, Canada, so no easy trip necessarily to get back home, but able to rejoin her team here, wanted to be here, the ACC tournament. I mean, wide open shots that Georgia Tech can't connect on, and then they get beat down the floor. Wagner, welcome back to Dontavia. She had two points in the first, and a pretty two in transition there. Nell Fortner has coached everything from the Olympics to the WNBA. Three times she's been coach of the year in three different power leagues. No one's ever done that. She has a Hall of Fame resume. Good dish there from Morgan. Set up the shot and Blackshear has four points. Meaning you have faith that I, I Nell's got a plan to get yeah. it figured out over there. Nell's a believer. Like, she's going to keep encouraging her kids, and she's going to keep figuring out something to do to help them. Todd turns it over. Georgia Tech takes control. This 
Schwartz working hard to get open. It's Wagner on the defensive front. And she'll turn the steal into two on the other end. Boy, if Dontavia has been out for a month, she certainly looks really good. And she's made several defensive plays, not just steals, but she's been disruptive on this end of the floor. Now she's face guarding Schwartz. Dontavia Wagner, three steals a game, led the ACC most of the season. She gets up the line on a flat lateral pass, and she's gonna dunk it on the other end. Really just lays it in. In March, we move even faster. The star-studded day we've got lined up. Push through each round together, and we don't let up until we are the ACC champions. our move, the 2023 Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. This is the oldest tournament. Listen to this crowd, they love it. And it has great meaning to the players and to the coaches. They want to win the ACC. Can't be stopped, better get out the way. Let me show you all the swag I got right here. Get out the way. to the ACC Tournament. I'm your glitchy Wi-Fi, and I've decided, well, if you're on vacation, I am too. <laughs> Which means your smart home isn't so smart. Sprinkler on. And now I'm sending mixed signals to your garage. But if you haven't bundled your home in auto coverage, trying to unpack this isn't going to be too much fun. Hey, check the router. So get all state. You better protect it from mayhem while saving up to 25% when you bundle home and auto. Interesting piece. Let me bring in my expert. Mm, so many scratches. Uh, those are from my car keys. Such a rich history. This won't do well at auction, but at AT&T, it's worth a brand new Samsung Galaxy S23. Wait, really? Mm -hmm. What about this? AT&T's deal is back. Wow. Everyone gets a free new Samsung Galaxy S23 with the Galaxy phone rated. Any year, any condition. Gatorade Fit. Fitness starts from the inside out. Get healthy, real hydration. And no added sugar, artificial sweeteners, or added colors. Gatorade Fit. Healthy, real hydration today helps you feel tomorrow. ButcherBox delivers grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Receive your special offer today. Oh, man, they just had the dance cam going here in Greensboro. The party has started for our Ally ACC Women's Tournament first round today. Wake Forest, Clemson moving on. Will it be Boston College or Georgia Tech to join the party and move on to the second round tomorrow? You see the slate of games. Four coming your way tomorrow. Four more in the quarterfinals on Friday. We got the semifinals on Saturday and, of course, the championship Sunday. That one over on ESPN. NC State, the three-time defending champs of this tournament, but no double bye for the Wolfpack this year. Yeah, they're going to have their hands full tomorrow with Syracuse. A uh, game they played up in the Carrier Dome earlier this year and won. Diamond Johnson was not available in that game. We're wondering if she'll be available this week to play for NC State. So waiting on whether she's out of the boot or not. Travel there on Gokdang. That's the 14th turnover by the Eagles. And you see it's Nerea Hermosa defending just before that timeout. Bon Ananas picking up her third personal foul. Hermosa trying to make a difference on the offensive end as well. Good rebound by Blackshear, top rebounder for the Jackets this year. What a crash from the weak side. Dontavia Wagner whistled for the foul, but for Kayla Blackshear, sophomore transfer from Alabama, was a mid-year transfer last season. Arrived in January of 2022. 
Speaking of transfers, Cam Schwartz, that's one of the storylines for this matchup. Schwartz facing her former team, Boston College. She played 82 games for the Eagles in her career. Mayer pushing the tempo down the floor for the Eagles. She's fouled. This is a smart play by Mayer. She runs right up the backside of Cameron Schwartz. Watch this right here. She makes Cameron Schwartz turn a couple of times. She doesn't know which way she's going. Then she draws a foul and gets to the line. That's the way you do it in transition and get to the free throw line. Really well done. They're not freshmen anymore by this point, right? They played the whole season. We've seen them grow and learn throughout the year. It is still their first ACC tournament though, and Boston College actually coming into this one with, we mentioned, no seniors, only team in the ACC with no seniors, no transfers. They had five freshmen, and they came into this ACC tournament with fewer than 90 collective minutes played in the ACC tournament amongst all their players available for this game. Three players have tournament experience for Boston College. That's it, that's how young they are. Mayor committing the foul, her first. See the roster breakdown for Boston College and that big zero in the experience in senior category. It's certainly been one of the things they have battled this season, but what also gives them hope for the future with this young group moving forward. Bianca Jackson got off to such a hot start, Debbie, in that 7-0 start for Georgia Tech. She had five of those first seven points. It's been pretty quiet since. Blackshear from the elbow. I mean, a couple of wide open jump shots at the elbow. I don't know if Nell Fortner can get her team better shots. They gotta make some. Yeah, when she was asked this week, all the ACC coaches were on a call talking to media, and someone asked Nell Fortner, you know, what is gonna make the difference for her team here in the postseason, and she said, you know, sometimes it just comes down to hitting your shots. I know that seems simple, but to your point, she feels like they've done a good job of getting good shots. I just listen, make them. I listened to her post game against Virginia Tech, and that's pretty much what she said. Mental toughness, play hard, be ready to shoot, and shoot it with confidence. Her team trailing Boston College here in Greensboro. Jen Hildreth, Debbie Antonelli, Angel Gray, happy to have you along with us. This is the nightcap. It's an early night tonight, folks. That's just getting you ready for what's to come in the ACC tournament to four game days. Those are long days, but amazing days here at the ACC tournament as Todd drives and is fouled. I mean, this game is low scoring. It's not clean. The crew's trying to stay awake down there. But I think <laughs> I think the the game is competitive. They're competing. Deanna Todd on the free throw line told you about her mom who she's playing for. As Lacey continues to get looked at over there, got poked in the eye, I believe, on that last play where she had to come out. And Todd's been Fantastic from the free throw line all season. She actually leads Boston College close to 89% on the year. Georgia Tech, by the way, has yet to shoot a free throw in this game. Maybe well, that changes here. There you go. Speak it into existence, Jen. It's a second personal on Dontavia Wagner, and that'll send Tony Morgan to the free throw line, freshman out of Tallahassee, Florida. Well, we love coming to Greensboro for the ACC Women's Tournament. The men are coming back as well. The 70th annual New York Life ACC Men's Tournament begins next Tuesday afternoon right here at the Greensboro Coliseum. All three first round games will be right here on ACCN 2, 4.30, 7 Eastern and also on the ESPN app. Dang on the inside, 
Great slip, good no call. Jackson trying to draw the charge. Instead, it's a dozen now for the Boston College sophomore. Jackson. Mayer sees Wagner streaking up the floor. Wagner trying to make up for lost time. She's fouled by Aviance Carter. You miss a mid-range jump shot, and there's no one back on defensive balance. A couple times, BC's had an over-the-top run out off their rebounding ability. Dontavia Wagner out the last nine games coming into this one tonight. Dealing with the lower leg injury. Hey, ladies, with Maria Gokdang just going off in this game at right now and just being so dominant in the paint, you wonder how much Georgia Tech misses Kara Dunn, who is missing this game because she missed or she was out of the Notre Dame game after a lower leg injury. She's listed as day-to-day, -day, but she had three straight double-figure scoring games, and so that was a presence that Coach Nell Fortin was really hoping she had for this tournament, but you can almost question how much she would impact this game tonight. Yeah, that's a great point too, Angel, and we certainly should mention. I mean, Kara Dunn, the freshman, with a big absence for Georgia Tech as she's out for the second straight game. She's played an important role and had really started to come on, had a couple of back-to-back 20-point -back games for the Jackets toward the end of the regular season. But this is a really strong take on the baseline by Cam Schwartz, and, and this is what Georgia Tech needs to do. Get to the free throw line. Clock stopped. Make some free throws. Jackets need to find a way to get some points. There's just one of their last 12 from the floor. Half the free throws falling so far for Georgia Tech. Two for four are the Jackets in the game. Austin College, meanwhile, eight for 11 from the line. Seven on the shot clock. Todd needs to get a shot off, and Swartz bails her out. 2.6 left on the shot clock. It's a third personal on Cam Swartz. And that is the 15 foul, so that will put Todd back on the free throw line. She hit her first two. Continues to do a nice job from the free throw line for the Eagles. You can see Coach Burnaby McNamee talking to her freshman point guard. I mean, how exciting is, is that connection right there? Joanna was a really good point guard herself, and Mayer is going to learn from a, a really good teacher. They watch a lot of film. They study the game. Mayer's got incredible upside. Like I said earlier, there's so many great AC, ACC point guards. you got a lot of film against a lot of different players that you can study in the offseason. How about both these point guards are going to be players to watch for their respective teams over the next few years as Morgan drives for Georgia Tech. She now has seven, continuing to inch the Jackets a bit closer, but under a minute now to play in the third quarter, still a ways to go. Hermosa makes Scott Dang into a passer. Wagner can't finish it off, though. Another tip and deflection by Wagner. I tell you what, this is a young BC team. If they stay together and all come back next year, this could be a really good basketball team. They can see, you can see the pieces that could come together for Coach Burnaby McNamee. How about a ball fake to get open? Imagine Nell Fortner yelling something of the same, or very similar anyway to her team is that Good Boston College defense got the hand of the last few passes. Morgan. Blackshear. 
is fouled by Gokdang. That's going to be the third personal on Gokdang. See, and all of a sudden now, Georgia Tech's got a little life because they're getting to the free throw line. Is that three consecutive trips to the stripe? Yeah, Georgia Tech has started to get there more. Debbie came into this quarter without having been there at all. Five points in the game for Blackshear. All of those coming in this third quarter make it six. Winner of this game moves on to face Miami tomorrow in the ACC tournament. Four games coming your way here on ACCN starting at 11 a.m. Eastern. Mayer goes inside. Gokdang had it batted away. Little help defense there for the Jackets as Aviance Carter came in to help the cause. But Georgia Tech, a ways to go. Ten minutes to do it here in Greensboro. You've dreamed about the perfect house, a place to call your own, and a place to not only stretch out. Eating, and Syracuse wants to make sure. I don't think there's any doubt, but you just want to remove any doubt with a win. Is there a better energy ambassador around than Felicia Leggett Jack and what she has brought to Syracuse this year? Not in Syracuse, that's for sure. I mean, <laughs> she's been outstanding. Yeah, we've she's, a, she's a wonderful person. I've known her for a long time. She cares deeply about her athletes and the game. And the ACC and Syracuse are lucky to have her. An alum coming back to her former stomping grounds. Getting oh, to see nice. the Orange tomorrow. Wagner had a good look. Really, really good duck in by Wagner. Good isolation off the timeout by Joanna Burnaby McNamee. Hermosa calling for it, gets it up and over Van Timmeren for two. Here comes some pressure by Georgia Tech. They got to change the rhythm of this game. Good timeout by Joanna Burnaby McNamee. She wants to make sure her team doesn't start turning the ball over. Now trying to have her team hang on here, moved around two tomorrow. Subway keeps up in the game with the Subway series, an all-star menu of delicious subs. There's the Philly, the Monster, the Boss. If I hadn't seen it in person, I wouldn't have believed it. Even this believing stuff, the Subway Series. Try Subway's tastiest menu upgrade yet. Jimmy, my man up there, we are not going to stop chasing the dream of raising dollars in your dream. Jimmy's dream was to beat cancer. Look up not giving up in the dictionary. A picture of my wife will be there. You're one of the strong ones, okay? <laughs> Just remember that. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. There are all kinds of products in this world. Things that make life easier or more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there to guide you through the happiest, in most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. This is our product. This is what we do. It's bow time. <coughs> our real deal Southern flavors bring you back to basics, just like grandma's home cooking. If your grandma was a Bojangles. Get a four piece Supremes combo with biscuit, fries, and tea only at Bojangles. It's bow time. <coughs> 92% still active? Seems high. Seriously? It's just a bike. Wait, they make a treadmill with an intuitive speed knob? Yeah, wanna try? 92% stick with it, so can you. Rent a Peloton bike or Bike Plus. Terms apply.
Do you have an invention idea but don't know what to do next? Go to inventhelp.com. We have representatives nationwide and services to showcase your invention. Get started today. Go to inventhelp.com for free information. The Ally ACC Women's Tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we are all better off with an Ally. And it is great to have Ally such a good partner for women's sports. Signing on, title sponsor here at this ACC Tournament, which we expect, if it's anything like the regular season, Debbie, to be highly entertaining as we spend the week here with you in Greensboro. This is probably the most parody that the league has seen, and I don't think there's anyone on the other side of the bracket anywhere in this league that anyone's afraid to play. You know, there's no one that's really scary. There's a lot of good teams. Makes for great competition. Daly spinning. There have been times where you have more of a clear-cut dominant team, yeah, you number one or two. You don't want to see this team in your bracket. You, you don't want to see them until you get to the finals. I can't, I can't say that about any of the teams this year. Look at that change of pace there from Morgan going to the basket. Cut it to nine. 8-0 Georgia Tech run as the Jackets finding a little life, trying to keep their season alive. Coming off the timeout, Tony Morgan. Nice hezzy. Good finish. All Georgia Tech so far this quarter. BC has yet to score. Jackets cutting into that Boston College lead. Aggressive takes to the basket by the Jackets. And Hermosa with the follow up is fouled. Well, that's the third quarter and fourth quarter differences that Georgia Tech has been able to get to the free throw line. Clock stopped. Got to lengthen the game the best way you can right now. And that was the fourth personal foul on Maria Gakde, who has really been the focal point of what Boston College has done offensively. Okay, now they go small, and this gives Hermosa an opportunity to take advantage. Well, we've seen some amazing fans across the ACC, and now we need your help. ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. So snap a picture, take a video, tag it with hashtag all the devotion, and then post it to social. You just might see it on ACCN. That one free throw from Hermosa, cutting the BC lead to eight. The Eagles have led by as many as 17 points in the third quarter of this game. Six now to shoot, Van Timmeren. Wagner working hard for the rebound. She does keep it alive and is fouled. That's gonna be four on Swartz. What a difference Dontavia Wagner can make with her athleticism. Look at this 50-50 ball. She hunts it down. Well, this is a player in Wagner who is a junior in her second year with Boston College. And last year, she didn't start a single game. Averaged just under 10 minutes per game this season. She's averaged over 30 minutes. She's the leading scorer, leading rebounder, and that's having been out the last nine games for Boston College. Eight points for Wagner. Mayer got her hand to the basketball. Swartz playing with the four fouls. It's a jump ball. And T. Kantner quickly gets in there to bring the piece. Well, we're all aware of a little disruption in the SEC this morning. Both teams, both players here. And that's most likely what has caused the delay here as the officials are going to take a look at this play. We'll let you know what they find out about that play when we come back. 
I'm a screen addicted tween. And if I'm not posting on social media, I don't feel seen. Hey, Mom, look. Mom? Oh, my God, Mom, you got to look at this. Nope. Keeping my eyes on the road is paying off with drivewise. Post about that. Boring. Oh, say cheese. No, thank you. Unblock me. Stop. <laughs> that was awesome. Hey, once you're at, I'll tag you. Get drive wise from all state, save 40% for avoiding mayhem, like me. Gatorade Fit. Fitness starts from the inside out. Get healthy, real hydration. And no added sugar, artificial sweeteners, or added colors. Gatorade Fit. Healthy, real hydration today helps you feel tomorrow. Interesting piece. Let me bring in my expert. So many scratches. Uh, those are from my car keys. Such a rich history. This won't do well at auction, but at at and it's worth a brand new Samsung Galaxy S23. Wait, really? Mm -hmm. What about this? at and deal is back. Wow. Everyone gets a free new Samsung Galaxy S23 with the Galaxy phone traded. Any year, any condition. Since I was little, I wanted to be a part of a team. I've played just about every sport there is growing up. My mom's been there for me through every season. We'll get him next time. Mostly to keep me fueled and cheer me on. Thanks, Mom. Love you. Love you too. It took me a minute, but I finally found what I love. All thanks to her. You're always there for them, and we're always here for you. Food Lion, here for every moment. With ButcherBox, you get 100% grass-fed beef, organic free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Sign up today at ButcherBox.com for a special offer. I'll make you look. I'll make you double take. Soon as I walk away, call up your chiropractor just in case your neck break. Tell me what you, what you, what you gonna do. Say I made you look. In March, we move even faster, push through each round together, and we don't let up until we are the ACC champion. That's our move. The 2023 Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. Our officiating crew talking to both head coaches after that last play before we went to break. There was no foul called on the floor. However, they did think they saw something with a well, swinging of an elbow at the end of the play. There was a jump ball, which made the ball dead. Then there was a swing of the elbow, which they looked at. And I think this is a dead ball contact technical foul, which counts as a personal. And if that is true, that would be five, and Cameron Schwartz would be done. Mic check moment. Now D. Kantner's trying to allow us to hear what the decision was. After feedback, after feedback, after review, the jump ball was followed by an intentional foul by number one. We were shooting two free throws, anybody from BC, and they received the ball at midcourt. There you go, D. Kantner giving us an explanation. Dead ball contact technical might not be uh, something that we use anymore. The intentional foul on Georgia Tech's number one. And you can see what a difficult way that is for Cam Swartz to have to end her night and potentially her career. It started back in 2017-18 at Colorado. She went to Boston College for three years, came to Georgia Tech this year with high aspirations, and is going to have to sit the rest of this one out. I mean, Cam Swartz has made some incredible memories here throughout her career. We were just looking back and looking up. We knew she had had a big game. And back in 2021 for Boston College, she had 33 points, most points ever in a first round ACC tournament game as Boston College beat Pitt. So the delay here was there was music being played during the free throw. So just some conversation to make sure that doesn't happen. But Mayer, typically an 80% free throw shooter, 
is not able to add any more points, but BC will get the ball after that intentional foul. That sent Swartz to the bench, her fifth foul in the game. So an already shortened Georgia Tech bench with Kara Dunn, the freshman being unavailable, out for the second straight game due to injury, gets even shorter. And that's her leading scorer as well in Swartz. That went straight through the wickets. Five hole. <laughs> It'll stay on this end. 12 seconds on the shot clock for the Eagles. Good to see Lacey. Guess she can see fine after she was poked in the eye earlier in the game. That pass was put behind Bianca Jackson, and now it's off her fingertips. Daly was off to the races, had it batted away. Good recovery there from the Jackets as they'll get the ball back. Morgan saw some daylight, took advantage. That's a tough basket right there. Almost thought she took one dribble too much and over penetrated into the shot blockers. Morgan maybe having to be a little bit more of a scorer than a facilitator. And Wagner, you think that basket meant a lot to her? Oh, they're going to call a technical foul on Dontavia Wagner for taunting, I believe. Eric Bruton. He's got a technical foul, yes, on Dontavia Wagner. So some good, some bad on the play. The basket, the good, but. So you, I think we shoot the technicals first, then we go back to the point of interruption. And what gets her there, Debbie Wright, is the looking right at the Georgia Tech player. That's where that taunting would come in. So she gets one more free throw. Basket was good. D. Kander giving a little education over there about sporting-like behavior. So now we'll go down to the other end. And because of that technical foul, Bianca Jackson will shoot for Georgia Tech. Now Georgia Tech will get the basketball. So it was a three-point play for Dontavia Wagner on the offensive end, but then the technical foul gave Georgia Tech the two free throws and the ball. Hermosa trying to get position inside, and she was fouled. That is a 6-5 frame that has a lot of strength to it and experience. And those points for Bianca Jackson at the free throw line were her first since the very beginning of the game. Maybe that's what starts to get her fired up a little bit. Bianca Jackson sees a wide lane and takes advantage of it with a little contact, but it doesn't bump her off her line. You can see Georgia Tech just creeping up on it. They just can't get a break here to get it to a one or two possession game. Offensive rebound. And Boston College trying to draw the charge. Instead, it's a block called. Fifteen fouls, so Georgia Tech's going to have an opportunity, potentially, Debbie, to get a lot of points back from the free throw line here. Black 
year is a perfect four for four from the line. She has eight points in the game. It is a seven point Boston College lead. Gokdang still on the bench for Boston College with four fouls. It's an 8 0 run by the Jackets. Five to shoot. Daly. Morgan really getting up for that rebound. Can't hang on to it though, so it'll stay with Boston College on this end. Morgan is a tremendous rebounder from the top for a point guard. Got Dang back in the game. Now we'll see if that changes things for the Eagles. And can she be disciplined and make sure she stays on the floor playing with four fouls? Todd lines up the three. You betcha. That was for her mom, Amanda. Jackson. Yeah, she's starting to go now, Bianca Jackson. She had eight of Georgia Tech's first 10 points, had nothing until those two free throws she thought she shot for the technical. Now she scored six straight. There's a sense of urgency when this could be it, and it starts to creep in during this moment in the game. And Bianca Jackson, a player who spent two years at South Carolina. She sat out a year, went to Florida State for two years. Now at Georgia Tech, wanting to end on a high note. Morgan. But plenty of high notes in her first year as a Yellow Jacket. And now pressuring defensively, the two freshmen going head to head there. Morgan whistled for the foul. Georgia Tech foul. That's the fourth team foul on the Jackets. So Georgia Tech already in the bonus as Boston College has five fouls. The next Georgia Tech foul is going to put Boston College on the line the rest of the way. Got dang so wide open. She was shouting for it, but the defense was ready for it. Jackson on the break. Here comes the pressure. You got to keep it on right now if you're Georgia Tech. And here come the Jackets. Now it is a two possession game. You just want to have the game in a position where you can manage the end and have a chance to win. And that's what Nell Fortner's team has done to this point. Jackets six for nine in the quarter. BC has led almost the entire game. Van Timmeren well off the mark. Yeah, Georgia Tech had that 7-0 start but then Boston College gathered themselves really in the second quarter and hadn't looked back. They've been able to stay in front, but a good push being made here by Georgia Tech. Set the screen on the other side and let her drive down the lane line. Top shot for Jackson, who nails it. Wow. A comeback. 19 points in the game for Bianca Jackson. Georgia Tech trailed by as many as 17 in the third quarter. It is a three-point game. Now you got a little game pressure on you to execute and to be sharp with your details. Bianca Jackson. The steal and the layup. She gets ahead of the ball, and then the last play, look at how wide open the right side of the floor is, yet she comes off the screen and drills a triple. 11 fourth quarter points for Jackson. Boston College does manage to get the offensive rebound. They can't put it back, there's no foul called, and now Georgia Tech with a chance to tie. You got to go through Jackson here. She's got the hot hand right now. 
Well, she has 19, and in our first two games of the day, 19 points was the high for any player. See if she can break that threshold and help get her team through. Good hands by Wagner. Steal the drive, and she'll be shooting That's free throws. That's actually a good foul. You want to make Wagner earn it. You can't let her have a layup. This pass is slow, and it takes too long to get there. It is the fourth personal on Bianca Jackson, too, who obviously, if we've just talked about, has been the best for Georgia Tech in this fourth quarter in particular. That's a good foul. 13-3, Yellow Jacket run. Now you got to box out Gokdang, because you got to really squeeze her. Well, she's been the go-to player, Gokdang, for most of this game when she's been on the floor for Boston College. And timeout call, Georgia Tech. We've got a four-point game, just over two minutes to go here in Greensboro. Interesting piece. Let me bring in my expert. Mm, so many scratches. Uh, those are from my car keys. Such a rich history. This won't do well at auction, but at AT&T, it's worth a brand new Samsung Galaxy S23. Wait, really? Mm -hmm. What about this? AT&T's deal is back. Wow. Everyone gets a free new Samsung Galaxy S23 with the Galaxy phone traded. Any year, any condition. Georgia Tech saying, we're not done yet. Bianca Jackson leading the comeback charge for the Yellow Jackets, 11 of her 19 points in this fourth quarter. She is a coach's kid, and she understands game management, clock management, late game situations. And she's, she's, she's led this comeback, Jen. Yeah, I was just about to say, Debbie, look at that field goal shooting for Georgia Tech this quarter. That's what's spurred this comeback. They were 12 for 45 from the floor through the first three quarters. Seven for 11 in the fourth to make this one a game after they trailed by 17 in the third quarter. So if you're BC, you've got to talk to your team about poise and patience and move the ball. And you know Georgia Tech's going to be trying to get a steal. And on this end of the floor, you got to make sure you stay solid and don't gamble. Make sure you block out. It's all tightening up all the details. Hermosa. Gokdang playing with four fouls, remember, for Boston College, defending Hermosa on that play. Sixteen seconds on the shot clock for Georgia Tech. Jackson picked up a dribble. Eight now for Georgia Tech. Screen coming. Wagner on Jackson. Knuckleball. Juju Lacey just boxing out all the way to the corner to eventually get possession for her team. So Dontavia Wagner tasked with trying to cool off the red hot Bianca Jackson. Forced her into the tough shot, that possession. Seven now on the shot clock for the Eagles. Wagner gets to the basket. It's short. Got gang comes flying in. Wagner with the follow. You don't need a three, but you need to score quickly. Eight points this quarter for Wagner and Boston College. Open look to the basket for Morgan. Pick up, press, trap, get a steal, get a deflection. Final minute of this first round matchup in the ACC tournament. Still a two possession game, four point lead. There's Boston a steal. College, Morgan. Just enough of a touch. There is a whistle on the play. JoJo Lacey tried to pick the pocket, but there was a foul call. 
I mean, this is a great steal right here by Morgan. That's exactly what you wanted. And BC, they got to be sharp with the ball. Cam Swartz, the leading scorer for the Jackets, relegated to the bench with about seven minutes to go in this game. So BC will use one of their three timeouts here to advance the ball, I'm, I'm assuming. Now three timeouts remaining for Boston College, two for Georgia Tech, a miss from Morgan on the free throw line. The freshman being put in a pretty difficult pressure pack spot here. Well, let's take a look at our Bojangles big bow moment of tonight's game, Debbie. Jackson, it's Bian Bianca Jackson doing a great job of scoring for BC, excuse me, Georgia Tech late. She's made all the big shots, she's made big plays. Jackson playing with a sense of urgency, three for three outside the arc, seven for 13 overall. 11 points in this fourth quarter comeback bid for Georgia Tech. She is playing with four personal fouls. So she's not the player that will look likely want to commit a foul here. I, I think what Nell Fortner might do is look to trap, try to get a steal or deflection, see if you can get a tip. And if you can't, then I think you got a foul right away. It's a, uh, actually, no, I think you play it out. It's three, three points. I was blocked by, I thought it was a two down there. It's a, it's a three-point game, so I think you play defense. Three-point lead for Boston College as Joanna Burnaby McNamee did, as you predicted, Debbie, called the timeout, has the opportunity to advance the ball. So good defense here from Georgia Tech. They get the ball back. There's a 17 second difference between now, game clock and shot clock. Now, Maria Gokdang has a layup. I foul her. She's a 52% free throw shooter. I don't let her have a layup. Eagles looking to set up a play. Todd still with the ball in her hands. Daly. Hands it off to Gokdang. First points of the fourth quarter for Gokdang, and boy, are they big ones for Boston College. That's a great take. It's good distribution of the ball. Now, Nell Fortner's team is not a great three-point shooting team, but Bianca Jackson has hit three. So you have to decide here if you want to extend the game, get a quick two and foul or if you want to try to get a three. So Georgia Tech calling the timeout. They can advance the ball. You're going to need two scores either way. One of their best three-point shooters in Swartz on the bench, not available, having fouled out of this game. Jackson has had the hot hand. She's their best three-point shooter by percentage. And Nell Fortner is going to make them believe that they can make this play. I'm going to tell you that right now. You might go for the quick three, hope to get the rebound. Well, Wagner really not letting Jackson catch the ball. That's a mismatch. Morgan taking it to the basket against Gokdin, who's got four fouls. Timeout, Boston College. They looked for the three, they didn't get it. It's a great take, get a quick two. Now you got a foul. Or now you got a foul right away if you don't get a steal. I like that strategy actually, extending the game. If the three's not available, just try to extend the game as much as you can. Talk about a freshman playing with confidence. You know, that's what Nell Fortner has said. You know, when Kara Dunn was playing so well alongside Tony Morgan, heading down the stretch, and she was asked, what's been the difference with your freshman? And she said, they're just playing with a lot more confidence now. I mean, that's a big take by the freshman point guard, Morgan. And she's got nine points in this fourth quarter. 
14 in the game. So remember, both teams already in the bonus. 20 seconds on the clock. One timeout remaining for each team. Possession arrow is with Georgia Tech, so if you could tie them up for a jump ball. Gonna make her make free throws. Dontavia Wagner is four for seven. 68% free throw shooter on the season, although as we've talked about, remember she's been out for the last nine games. Nine points in this fourth quarter for Wagner. Trying to make the most of her return to the floor for the Eagles. Got them both. Nell Fortner using her last time out. So Wagner helping out Boston College, especially in this fourth quarter, she has really come alive, Debbie. But thinking about the last Georgia Tech play, we'll see what they come out of this huddle with because Wagner has really helped trying to close the door for Boston College. Well, Dontavia Wagner, 50% from the floor. She's made some critical free throws, seven boards. And she has been a valuable part of their defense because she got tips, steals, deflection. She's disruptive. She knows how to use her length. And for somebody who doesn't look like they're or weren't supposed to be in game speed due to conditioning for the, missing the last nine, she looks pretty good to me. So Georgia Tech, Debbie, can they afford to go a quick two again here, or do they need I to get that you, three? I think you got to get the three. This is uh, taking some time to develop. There's the three. And so they want to shoot it. Jackson, big offensive rebound from Daly, and then she's fouled. I think you had to go for the three there if you're Nell Fortner. Just, just. Easy foul and I, I, don't, I think Jackson had a pretty good look at it. Yeah, defensive rebound, excuse me, by the way, for Daly on the play. Yeah, I mean, Jackson's the one you want to shoot it. This could get it to fall, and she's been so good. Is it the lucky pink shoe or the lucky white shoe for Daly? That's what I want to know moving forward. And at this point, Boston College trying to ensure that there will be a moving forward for their team. Eagles trying to secure a date with six-seeded Miami tomorrow. Who they lost to by 21 points at Miami. Time running out on Georgia Tech. Couple more for Morgan. But Boston College withstood the comeback push from the Jackets to get the win in this one and move on to play another day. Joanna Burnaby McNamee said, the win in the regular season finale against Wake Forest, which snapped a six game losing streak, gave her team the positive momentum they would need coming in to this ACC 